and girls, welcome back to my channel. I do hope you're doing well. Normally we don't have any slap for makeup with Shan. Makeup with Shan? No, it's not. It's sit down with Shan. I promise I'm not too tipsy, alright guys? <laughs> Me and Mum, we've come back from Mrs. Doubtfire and I'm like, we've had a few little cocktails and gin and tonics and I was like, I really need to film. Like, I really need to film. So... You've got me with a little bit of slap on today, okay? Please don't get used to that because sit down with Shan, we all know, is hair up, no makeup, loving life. But I have a lot of hydration here. <laughs> we have the iPad, which is on charge, but you can still give us our details. But before we get into it, because you can see by the title, it's another sit down with Shan. And it is a topic, guys, that oh, we are going to go into depth. But I had a little email from a very kind viewer, as Mama G would say. And I want to do a little shout out to Holly and Sue. Holly sent me a message and said how she'd introduced her mum Sue to the channel. And oh my god, I love that. When I hear you guys are introducing family members, I'm like, oh, oh my god, I absolutely love it. It just makes me... Because me and mum obviously sit down and watch people on YouTube and I think, oh my god, is there people with like their mums or their dads or their partners and that's sitting down and watching me and mum? And that actually just makes my day. So thank you so, so much. Holly Sue, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope um, you have had a good Sunday if you're watching on upload day. But take care, stay safe. No, it's not the ending, but I want to wish you all well, okay? Guys, we need to get into this video and I think I need to get a bit of hydration in me. <laughs> right my lovelies let's try and bring it in a little bit because we like to get up close and personal for these sit down with shans don't we and you know what it's like normally i'm switching positions but i think we're going to stay in one number one because the ipad is on charge because i've got to charge it today which was fabulous and also i want to be quite comfy and i think i am this today i would love to say that this is um some daiquiri in here but it's Robinson's fruit juice. Right, this month, my lovelies, is all about overthinking. And we got quite a response on this, which makes me happy, but doesn't. Because overthinking, I can categorically say I am the worst person for it. And a lot of these questions, I will probably branch into some of the same my experience as well. Should we zoom you in a bit? Because I feel like you're very far away. Or is that too zoomed in? Hello. No, we can do with that. We can deal with that. Right. So, if you want to get involved in these videos, my lovelies, I do have an email address down below. And if you send me an email with, obviously, your address, and even if you pop your name in it for us, because I do like to assign everyone in my emails, like, a name, and just so I can put a name to the comment or bits and bobs like that. We have a chit chat if you ever want to email me about anything. But... If you send me an email, once a month, I will let you know when I'm doing, like, sit down with Shan, scandals with Shan, um, if there's McBang, confessions, anything like that. And you guys can send it in that way because I do it on my Instagram story, but some of you guys don't have Instagram. So if you've got Insta, you can go on there. If you've got email, you can do that or you can do it either way. So I said on there, guys, I need to know your overthinking dramas, tips, tricks, because we need some help. I mean, I know I need some help because if you saw my home bargains video, you will know I was in like a right old state. That was because little Miss Me was overthinking everything in life. So we're going to kick it off. One of my lovely says, I'm constantly overthinking. I overthink many things, whether I annoy people or if people don't like me because I don't have many friends. Well, my lovely, if you are on this channel, you have our thousands and thousands of friends in us because we are a nice little community here and I know you I wouldn't say personally but we speak well it is kind of personally even though I haven't met you I feel like I know you personally we chat all the time like via TikTok email Instagram and you are a lovely person and people who have you in their life are very very lucky so the people who don't they're not friends and you don't need that negativity I overthink about trying to lose weight as it's something I have to do for my own health weight is like oh if i overthink like to do with weight and the overthinking i can do on that can literally put me into a starvation mode for days and that's not healthy that's not correct that's not the way to go but your mind is sometimes as we say the mind is not our friend sometimes our mind can be an absolute bugger to be perfectly honest 
I overthink about the way I look. Am I still sexy and attractive to my husband? It's a big thing I need to stop doing, but I just can't. And it's a vicious circle. I'd appreciate any tips and advice. Your husband is very lucky to have you. Very, very lucky to have you. And I'm sure he finds you all of those things because you are a goddess. Let me tell you that. I... It's so easy, right, for someone who's not an overthinker to say to an overthinker, stop overthinking. Stop it. What are you doing? And as you're saying this, it is a vicious cycle. I go through stages where I can be so at ease with my mind and then one little thing will trigger it and I'm like, I will analyse and overthink everything to a T. And if you were to ask some of my friends, that is what they say is my worst quality. The fact that I will overthink and overthink until the cows come home. Literally will overthink the smallest of things. Even, does anyone overthink their dreams? You think that your dreams are real or your dreams are premonitions? Yep, I'm, I'm like that. I am like that, ED, because I don't know why. I feel like, is it my dreams talking to me? Is this a sign down the thing? Like, it is horrendous. And I don't know if an overthinker can ever not overthink. I've been overthinking. I feel it's from my childhood. I was always thinking of things outside the box and like, oh, well, what if that was to happen? What to do that? But as I've got older, I don't think it's a healthy habit. But I just physically can't and as I say I go through stages where yeah you think you're getting better and then one and it will be the most simplest of things sorry guys I keep seeing my hairs in that cushion and it's really annoying me and it's probably annoying you guys um you think you're getting better and then it will be the most simplest of things and you will start to feel that pattern come back and you're just like Really, like, I thought we was past this, okay? Here we go. Let's jump on the cycle again and drive ourselves to insanity because that's how it feels like, doesn't it? That is what it feels like. But my DMs are always open for you, my lovely. Of course your husband still finds you sexy and attractive. He would not be with you if he didn't. And if he wasn't, then he would be a fool because, as I say, you are a goddess, all right? But, yeah, tips and advice. I hope we've got some in it because I've had a rough scan over, but... I haven't had a look. My tips and advice, I can't give tips and advice on this because I would just be hypocritical. I am one of the world's biggest overthinkers, I think. And mum says to me, she, we'll be talking about a scenario and I'll go like, la, 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 la. And she'll be like, Shan, like, no. And I'm like, but I can't help it. I'm just like, I can't. One of my lovely says, overthinking when I'm going somewhere I've never been before. Now that I think is... It's not practical, but it's sensible in a way, especially if it's an area you haven't been. I get that because you want to know where you're going. You want to know what you're doing. I see that as prior preparation. I, I'm all here for that because if I'm going traveling or like when I've done my hike and that, I had everything mapped out to a T. Like everything was screenshotted on that phone. I made sure I had signal, power bank, everything like that. When I have to give myself a good talking to. If the kids are away, but they always send me lots of messages letting me know that they are doing the helps a best part when I get the one saying they're home safe. I think that's a parental thing, ain't it? I mean, I can't voice on that because I'm not a parent, but I am a child. Well, I'm not a child. I'm 28 years old, of course, but I'm Mama G's child. And if you remember the coming to the airport with me last year for Dominican Republic, Mum had an absolute meltdown at the airport aka bottom lip come out there was tears not on my behalf mum i actually screenshotted her face and put it in the thumbnail so if you haven't seen it go into the uh let's have a getaway playlist just leave a look at the thumbnail if you don't want to watch the video mm -mm. she was not a happy bunny and as i say she was the same she said she was on tender hooks all day and then once i sent her the message i was like i'm at the hotel it's all good i'll speak to you next week she was like Whew. done but clearly that doesn't stop with age. I'm like, I'm 28. I'm like, mum, I'm fine. She's like, no, you're not. I'm like, hmm. Meltdowns happen to us all and can't stop it. Wouldn't it be great if we could? Wouldn't life be great if we didn't have to have meltdowns? But we can't stop them, unfortunately. Going to Sand Airy Fairy, but meditation helps just once a week helps, as does wearing the bracelet. I actually got my bracelet out this week, my darling, because from the home bargains, I was having a big wobble. And when you mentioned it, I was like, oh my God, yes, because it's on my top. But this week, as I say, 
with work i've been doing like 13 14 hour shifts and it was literally i was running on an empty tank from probably wednesday mid wednesday that was it thursday i was falling asleep at my desk i couldn't focus friday i had the headache of all headaches let me tell you that so i actually have been getting it out and i'm like right it's on my top it's gonna be there and next week i'm not covering so i'm having slightly later starts at work. i say later my normal start time is eight last week i was having to go in at four to cover now i'm going to try and get in about six ish because i need to start preparing all of my stuff for before when i go away so yeah i'm not i, I don't want to be doing the four or five ams at the moment because to be honest if i'm up that early i should be filming I should be doing something productive, whether it be filming, editing, anything at all. That is how I would like to use my time. A bloody long soak and a Kindle in the bath works too. I actually need to charge my Kindle because that is what I take abroad with me. And oh, the baths are my highlights. A few times last week I did fall asleep in the bath. Mum came in and was like, Shan, and you know when you have that instant wake up and the water is ice cold? Like I felt like I'd got into an ice bath. Guys, what is going on with my blooming hair? So sorry about this. So sorry. I don't know what it's doing. But um, yeah, a bath. Oh, you know me. I love my baths. I love my bath bombs. That is the highlight of my day. Let me tell you that. Yet again, news and social media make people think they have to be a certain way. We are all different and it's finding a way to deal with it. That is a big thing. And um that's kind of what I what I was reconsidering last week. Social media can be so toxic. And I don't really, I say I don't really use it much. I have Instagram. So I have like my personal Instagram, which is like for family and friends. And then I have my lifestyle Instagram and my food Instagram. And I'm not going to lie, I have not posted on those accounts for a good few weeks now. And I need to get on there because I have DMs in there that I know you guys will be sending. And I think this is why I've done the email because I'm trying to come away from parts of social media. So if you do have me on any of my Instagram, please, 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 if you can and you have email, drop me an email, my lovely, with like your name. And I asked before if um you send just like a little picture because I like to put a picture to the name so then it's like a face to the name. And I think like I'm trying not to come away from social media but... Like emails I find a lot more easier to communicate with because I'll go on Instagram and you do see the best of everyone's life. And then that can sometimes spiral the overthinking because you think, well, I want to do that or I want to go there or why can't I do that? And yeah, it's not a good place. It is a very negative world, I'm afraid. Let me just quickly pop that. At the minute, my charger is on the neck, so I'm kind of like flitting between my iPad and my phone. But yeah, it's not a great place. Um tiktok i am really enjoying tiktok at the moment most of my tiktoks are sad i'm not gonna lie but i am gonna try and um, brighten them a bit up as so we're coming into holiday content there will of course i'm gonna try and do the uh jamaican nighttime outfits if you remember my tiktok for dominican last year it was like i jump in and i do the do 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 the outfit of the night i really want to do that for jamaica as well so we'll see that and i want to bring like some fun content back Facebook, I don't really use. Facebook is, I just have it to see what's going on with some family and friends that ain't close by to me. But I don't really post on Facebook much anymore. The only thing that will go on my Facebook normally is if I put a picture on my personal Instagram, it will then tag on to my Facebook. But I do feel social media, and just the, as you say, the media in general, it is so toxic. And I think it's getting belittling it's getting derogatory it's not getting nice i mean it's never really been nice but i just think there's no like bars held at the moment there's no boundaries it seems with media or social media and i'm like hmm, kind of like just want to take a step back from that you know because i do think stuff like that does make you overthink because you only ever see people's good side on social media i mean you don't with mine you see me upstands meltdowns the whole lot and i think on youtube it's like this is where i'm putting my focus in now before my focus was into instagram but i feel like now because i'm going on and i'm getting more and more kind of like yeah when i go on because i'm not seeing content that i would like to see i'm kind of seeing stuff that i don't know it makes me feel down a bit so i have actually gone on a little bit of a spree and i've tried to like clean up my instagrams 
but yeah email i feel is definitely the way forward with myself because i think that way it can just all like be solidified over on one but i do understand that some people don't have emails and some instagram is better so i'm trying to trying to work through it all but we're always there for each other my lovelies lots of love one of my lovelies says hi shan hope you and mama g are both well we are good thank you very much my lovely i'm definitely an overthinker and i severe with severe anxiety which doesn't help i literally overthink on everything and i find it exhausting how tiring is it oh my god if i could put into steps how much i overthink i'd probably do a marathon a day no exaggeration um but unfortunately that doesn't work because if i've done a marathon a day i would be in the body shape that i wanted and my mind, I mean, I can work on the mind. One of my friends said to me the other day, would you rather have a healthy mind and a body that needs a bit of work or a body that is bang on and a mind that needs a bit of work? And I was like, I hate you when you do this because you know what I'm going to say. And they was like, what? I said, I'd rather have the good mind and work on the body. Whereas for me at that time, I was like, I need the body bang on and I'll deal with the mind later. So they put it in like a different perspective for me. And I was just like, you know you think like, get out of my head. I constantly worry about my two boys of 21 and 25. If they go out and I can't get a hold of them on the phone, I think something has happened to them. And I sit up waiting for them to come in. That I think is parental as well. Because last night I had PT and I walked to my PT which is about four and a half miles. And I was going to walk back, but because we had an early start today, I was like, nah, can't do it to myself. So what I ended up doing was jumping on the bus. But my phone, I put into um, do not disturb because I didn't want to have, oh, everything's bleeping and that's flashing. We'll deal with that in a minute. I didn't want to have like my back would die on me. So I put it in like a do not disturb. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, when I got in, mum was like, where are you? When I looked, she texted me like, do you want me to run a bath? Shan, where are you? Shan, answer the phone. I was like, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry, mother. But yeah, I think it's cute. It, it, I think it's a parental thing. I worry about my health as I have a few health conditions, including osteoritis and fibro. I worry about how it's going to affect me in the years to come as I start to get older as I've just had my 50th birthday. Oh my God, hope you had a fabulous birthday. I wonder if I'll be able to drive and look after the home. I always think the worst case scenario on everything. I have had cancelling and CBT, which I find hard to put into practice. Any help tips would be gratefully received that I don't have to live in this constant fear for what ifs. I cannot give tips on this one. I could not be hypocritical. I can't, I really, really can't, and it's so frustrating, but in a way, it's a comfort to know that we're not on our own, like, we are not the only thinkers in this world, and I just think on that one, health is something that I feel we have part control over, but when it's internal health, we have no, we can't do nothing about that, people may say, Shan, you're wrong, but I think if it's genetically in you and stuff like that, you you have to make the best of it and you have to deal with it. And I know you will be smashing life. You will be absolutely fine. And I send you lots of love. Any problems, always send me a DM. I'm always there for you, my lovely. But I feel really useless in this video because I can't give tips and tricks. I feel this is a video where we all need to come in the comments and give our tips and tricks so that we can just help everyone. Absolutely everyone. I'm going to help myself though right now because i'm going to change this battery because canon you can't be shutting down on a sit down with shan there's too much to talk about darling there we go we're back right one of my lovelies i overthink everything shannon i'm a born warrior and i place it in my mind then that's when i start to panic if i feel it's not right my gut's telling me it's not i worry till it's over even like going for routine bloods at the doctors i panic the week before i go then on the day i'm a nervous wreck I hate needles as well. I'm a born warrior. I worry about everything and anyone and I can't settle till it's over. I worry if my books aren't in the right places or the can in the fridge are the wrong way and I have to correct it. Just the way I am being a Gemini, we overthink things but we can't change the way we are. I just think, okay, now I'll sort it tomorrow. That is a very good way of looking at life now. I would love to have that mentality and I do say probably about 80% of the time I am now into that. Hmm. It is what it is. That is a quote that I firmly stand by at this point in my life. It is what it is. I am like you there with, as you say, it's like the little things like 
are my books in the right order? Like, that for me, if my books are not in alphabetical or my DVDs ain't in alphabetical, I'm like, oh, no, they need to come out. They need to come out and I need to be done with it. It is very much... It's borderline OCD, I think, with me. To the point, like, where my underwear... My underwear has to be colour-coded. If my underwear's not colour-coded, I'm like... Pfft excuse me like what is happening i am not organized to the point of my life and i need to get this sorted out i am like you with bloods needles and blood tests freak me out but put a needle to me for a piercing or a tattoo and i know i'm getting something out of it so i will take the pain when it's a blood test i had a bad experience when i was a child but when I have a blood test and I know you're taking something from me, I'm like, oh, you can back away. And I go into like actual meltdown. Like mum still has to come with me if I need a blood test. I'm 28 years old. This is why I say like, I'm not a child, but I am still a child because something like that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Scares the life out of me still. So, um, I, you're not on your own there with the blood test, my lovelies, honestly. And I'm, you know what you say about cans in the fridge? I'm like that with jars in the cupboard. If the jars ain't facing around the front, I'm like, how can I see it? And I know if mum's been in there, because mum would just like chuck the little tins in, bless her. And I'd be like, mum. And she'd be like, oh, do I not put the labels around? I'm like, oh no. Or like, because we have minimal space in this house, I'm like, right, we'll keep like the tinned um like sweet corn kidney beans there we'll have the sauces there mum just chucks it in and then you have to like root through the covers to see what you've got and i'm like no and i i do think that it's borderline ocd i'm just like oh no i'm hoping whenever i move out and i have my own place like it will be very organized and i think by having such organization it will actually help me with the overthinking in the terms of house and organization i'm hoping it will like kind of bring me away from the ocd side you know we can only hope, my lovely. We can actually only hope. One of my lovely says, Oh my God, yes, overthinking. It's my mother-in-law who is nice to me, but then, I'm not going to say the word, I'm going to say gossips or tittle-tattles about me to everyone. And I'm guessing from this is you overthink this, but actually it's come out to be true. I, oh, it's hard, isn't it? I think in life, when you're in a relationship with someone, yes, that family comes along with them. I get that. But you are not in a relationship with that family. And I think sometimes families can maybe get a little bit too involved, let's just say. I've always been very lucky. Um, so I've had my two long-term relationships and for that, I'm very hesitant about the meat in my family. I say family, it's probably just mum and sometimes dada. And I'll tell you why sometimes dada in a moment. I, it is a daunting thing because especially parents, parents, they have to like you. you have, you're with their child and they're like, mm, no. When you're in a situation where the parents don't like you, it's like, mm, okay. I luckily have never had that. Um, both of my exes, I got on really well with their parents. And that's kind of like a blessing. It may not always be like that in life. But for the first, like, they was okay. It was nice. I would never be, like, overly... See, this is the thing. I'm not an overly lovely person. If you get me and I'm really, really lovely, like, you're very... You're special to me, okay? Because I feel I just... I've chipped away at those emotions through the years, probably through overthinking and stuff that's happened and situations and relationships. And I'm not very, like, lovey. It takes a lot for me to let my guard down with someone now. And as I say, with my previous in-laws, there was, like, we could go out shopping, we'd go for food. Like, there was never any hostility or anything there. And that's really nice. But I know that's not always the case. And I know that is not always the situation that people can be in. And this, for me, is where you have to have that level of respect for your in-laws. But at the end of the day, you're not in the relationship with them. You're in the relationship with your partner. And as long as you and your partner have the united front, families can say what on earth they want. And it won't tarnish them. I feel sometimes families get involved because 
they don't like situations they don't like new things that are happening and it's like i get that but you're not in this situation to put it bluntly and i think sometimes families can't make adjustments and i think if i was to get into something where it's like you would have that hostility it is natural so i don't know this situation how long it's been going on for anything like that but you may feel when you see them you're just like <sighs> you don't want to make the effort but then that makes it awkward for your partner but then i feel with a, a, a partner should stand by you if i like say for example one of my exes if mum didn't like them I'd be like, okay, you can have your opinion, but I, I am with them. Um, I say with me in mum, because mum has met both of my previous boyfriends, Dada is different. It takes a lot for someone to meet my dad. And I don't know why that is. I think it may just be like, I don't know, it's like a father-daughter thing. I'm like, mm, I don't know. Like, hardly any of my friends have ever met my dad. The only friends that have met my dad are, like, maybe some friends from primary school when dad used to come to the school sports days and that. But adult friends, none of them have ever met my dad. They've always met mum. And my last relationship, you obviously be, he never met my dad. Five years, he never met my dad. And it was like, that was the way it stayed. He only met my first boyfriend i think because we went out for like a 21st birthday meal for me bearing in mind i'd been with him since i was 15 so yeah six years down the line it took for him to meet him and now i'm just like i don't know i don't think i don't know i think if anything happens in the future it would just be like you meet when you meet like dada isn't really a social person as we all know like he can't do public transport he's not social at all and it's always that hesitant because dad never really liked my first boyfriend he never met my second one but he wasn't a fan of him from what he'd heard and what i've heard from mum from him so you know when it's just like hmm, okay we need to see how this goes but um yeah i would say my lovely i'll give a little bit of advice on this one do not rise to it at the end of the day you are with your partner and as long as you two are happy, that is all that matters. Families, I understand, they have an involvement. Um, I wouldn't say like extended family, but parents and grandparents or parents and siblings, I completely get. It would be easier if they all did get on. But unfortunately, that doesn't always work in life, does it? And we have to kind of just take it with a pinch of salt, move on and do as... Do as I always think like do as you would like to be done to you. But if I'm getting met with hostilities, I'm just I'm not even gonna rise to it and get into that thing because at the end of the day you would have respect for your partner. But I will make it known like I'm not I'm not tolerating this type of shenanigans, let's just say, because no one needs to deal with that. It's just there's enough rubbish going on in this world to have to then deal with that, and it's just it's headache that no one needs and one of my lovely says i constantly overthink uni and my relationship with my partner to the point where i burn myself out and he gets annoyed and worried and i have no idea how to turn it off or change first off i'm sorry that he gets annoyed and worried worried shows he cares he shouldn't be annoyed the thing is guys our mind will not be our best friend at sometimes our mind will be that nagging demon that will be like it will always have its two bob bit it will always have its two bob bit and i would never be angry at an overthinker i don't know if that's maybe because i am an overthinker but i think just in general you never know what goes on in someone's mind the mind is the only thing the mind is what you have your longest relationship with for in life that's how i look at it i'm like right it's there the minute I'm born and it will be there to the minute I die. My second longest relationship in my life is my blankie. My third longest relationship in life is my car. Then I have my two ex-relationships. So you see like the pattern of things like human interaction is my least. Possession interaction is number two and uh, three. And my main att attraction um, is attraction in it. 
my main retention, I suppose, is my mind. And your mind is not your friend at times, unfortunately. It is not your friend at all. And when you say you burn yourself out, and it linked back to a comment earlier, overthinking, right, guys, is exhausting and it is draining because you're sitting there and you may not physically be doing anything, but mentally your mind is going 10 to the dozen. And that will burn you out, that will run you down, that will put you in the crappiest of moods and it will make you feel like you can't move forward. Hence, last week with the Home Bargains haul, I had a little chat with you at the beginning, I was completely burnt out from that. That, I feel, was due to work and certain things that was going on outside of um, YouTube. As I said, I was um, saying how we keep everything open on here, but there's like a tiny percentage of my life, like a 5%, that I do like to keep private and that things were happening in that and I'm like, can't deal with it. And on top of that, you overthink them. And I got myself into a rut last week where I was overthinking to the point where I was sitting at my desk crying. You know me, I, well, I say you know me, you've seen me cry, but it takes a lot to get me to cry. I feel like it was because I was at that point of exhaustion, I couldn't be bothered to hide it anymore. And like I say, one day last week, they was just used to me crying at my desk. They was like, do you want some more tissues? I'm like, and they're like, Shan, what are you crying about? And I'm like, I actually don't know. Because I was making up certain situations in my head. And I'm like, Shan, what are you doing? Like, you're actually, it's torture. Oh, God. And I do feel overthinking is a form of torture. But in a way, it's a form of self-help and therapy, I find. Because it's almost like the you're causing yourself pain, but it's getting good results. I don't know how it works. Does anyone else feel like that with me? Like, if you're overthinking something, and it may be to the point where you reread old messages, you go on a social certain uh, social media and go through things, you you know what you're looking for when you go on there, or you know what you're going to see when you read these messages, because you've, you've read them a hundred times, but you still go back and you still get that same ugh the gut wrenching or the sadness or anything like that even happiness sometimes you can read messages and be happiness and it's just like a knife in the back you know and i don't know why we do it but we do and yeah um, me and let's say my girl brogan you know in uh, edinburgh we are like two peas in a pod because we do the exact same and i say to her please tell me if i'm crazy but xyz i've done this and she'll be like absolutely not because xyz done i've done this and i'm like this is why we're soul sisters from birth we was just separated and you was a few years down the line. But we are soul sisters. It is so, so hard. But please do not burn yourself out. I'm talking from experience on this. It makes you physically ill. And it is not worth what can happen in the end. Like mine, I went on, as I said before, like a starvation mode. I shut down mentally. I shut down physically. I had no oomph. I just... <sighs> No, and it's not good. It's not good for you. It's not good for your loved ones to see you like that. No one wants to see you like that. One of my lovely says, I constantly think people are talking about me and it's horrible. I get this. I get this because I don't really have a big circle of friends. I mean, we're huge here on YouTube. We are all friends, but in real life, you girl don't have many friends. Your girl is probably quite a bit of a loner. <laughs> Let's be perfectly honest. And I like it that way, but I do find if I walk into an environment where it's busy, aka sometimes like my workplace, I do walk in and even if it's like it just generally dies out of the conversation, I think, hmm, what is happening there? Like, have they been speaking? Like, have I got something on me? Like, I will automatically go to the bathroom and check, like, I haven't got anything on me. And I don't know. I, I do get uncomfortable in situations like that. And I do feel like, are they looking? Are they what? And it's not a good mindset because half the time you'll find these people haven't got a clue who you are. They ain't paying attention and it is all in your head. It is actually all in your head. One of my lovely says, I overthink if I'm good enough mum to my three kids. It's so hard to know. You, I, can, I don't even need you to think on this. I don't even need you to think. You are an amazing mother. Your children are very, very lucky to have you as their parent. And please never, ever doubt your abilities. Again, we speak on Instagram. You are a lovely, lovely soul. And yeah, you, you haven't got to worry about that, my lovely. 
Someone else says, I do overthink all the time at work, but I'm learning to take it step by step and do one thing at a time. That is a good thing. I feel like overthinking in a home life and a work life is completely separate. Overthinking at work is, can I get this done in time, deadline, overtime, money, security. That's the overthinking within work. Then in home life, it's like probably still fi part financial stuff to do with work. But it's like stability, next step, what on earth can we do? It's stuff like that. Taking a step by step is the best way, which is why I love doing my lists, okay? I absolutely love doing lists. We all know that. Lists, organisation, uh, countdown app, everything like that. I like to be organised. I like to think I have stuff under control, even if I don't. And we just go with it. We absolutely go with it. However, there are times when you can't take it step by step and you feel like you are running at 100 miles an hour. And when it stops and you come to the realisation, you're like, oh my goodness, what on earth has happened? What on earth has happened? And then you almost have to like take a step back and chill yourself before you wreck yourself. Yes, there's a very old school saying, but I feel we need to because you have to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because if you didn't, you're going to end up ill and it's not good. And I think I wish you could do tests for your brain, which I mean, you probably can do in um, certain places or like up London or whatever, because I would love to know if there's a certain thing in the head that is to do with overthinking, because if it is, I'd be like, can you please just remove it? It would give me a better form of life if you could just take like this little cell out so I don't have to doubt everything. And that would be like job done, wouldn't it? Can you imagine if that was an option? I don't think it is, but a girl can hope. Paying credit paying credit cards off money situation. So this is like financial overthinking. And you know what? In this blooming day and age, with the way the economy is going, you're not the only one, my lovely. And I'm so sorry that you're having to have that worry. But there is not enough support in this world. I, I get very frustrated. We all know when I talk about British politics. Because it's like, keep the rich rich and make the working class more poor, in essence. And it's like, you see, for example, now the mortgage rates have gone up to like over 5%. Why? What is the need to keep making these increases? Because you are not increasing wages. You are increasing everything in the goddamn supermarkets. What on earth is going on? You're increasing absolutely everything. And it's not good. It's not good. And I do think that if you was to say to someone, do you overthink? They might go, no. And you'd be like, do you overthink anything with money? They'd be like, oh my God, yes. You, you're thinking, am I going to make ends meet? Have I got enough for my rent or mortgage this month? Have I got enough to put food on the table for me? These are things that in this day and age, we should not be having to think about. And it absolutely baffles me that the government are putting us in this situation. And as you can tell, I get very, very irate on this. One of my lovely says, I got diagnosed with ADHD at the age of 52. So now I know why I overthink health anxiety. Wow. So is overthinking part of ADHD? I'm going to have to look into that. I actually never thought it could be linked with like another health issue. Oh, but I hope you're okay, my lovely. As I say, I hope... Um, you are doing okay any problems you can always drop us an email another one of my lovely says i just wonder if it's going to get any better life financially is hard bills are hard and to pay do we or pay bills this is the thing people go and do a day's work come home and you just want to have a good meal put the telly on put the heating on in the winter and you can't and i'm going to have the same mentality guys as i had last year the heating will go on for one hour a night, which, you know me, I, my goodness, before all these price increases, that heating would be on from maybe like four o'clock in an evening. I'd get in from work at half five. It'd be nice and toasty and warm for my bath. And me and mum would have that heating until about nine o'clock at night. Last year, I think it was like, put it on at five. I'd get in for half five, run my bath. That heating would be off half six, seven o'clock. Sometimes eight-ish if mum was doing like drying the washing and that. But you think, 
you go to work and do all these hours and one little freaking luxury of having the heating on you can't even have that it is it it's so annoying ain't it it's so annoying but I, ju I just don't understand the way of the world i really don't guys i do not know what on earth is happening in life i do not know uh, one more. Oh, I've sent an email. I got that, my lovely. Overthinking word was made for me. I worry if the sun's going to come up tomorrow. You know what? I love that for you. This is the thing when people say, "Oh, well, what do you overthink?" You can overthink the slightest of things. Oh my goodness, is it going to be raining tomorrow? If it's going to be raining, I can't wear that. Like because we had um, we've got the weekend in London today. Yesterday it said weather's nice. Okay, I walked to my PT. It was nice. I got to my bus station to come home from the PT. Great with black hat. And then I'm sitting there thinking, I don't know what to wear now. I had an outfit planned, but now it looks like it's going to rain. And when we got into London today, it was nice. And just as we was about to pop in for some food, it hammered down. And you're thinking, well, do I take an umbrella? Do I need an umbrella? Do I wear a jacket with a hood? Do I not take a jacket with a hood? Do I take an extra layer? Do I take a scarf just in case? But the scarf's going to... It's terrible, isn't it? It's so freaking annoying. And that is why I just wish there was a switch. I wish there was a blooming switch to turn this feeling off. But I, you're wondering if the sun's going to come up. Well, with the way the weather is at the moment, darling, I don't actually know. It's, it's ridiculous, ain't it? We're supposed to be in August here, guys. And look at this. I'm sitting here in a dressing gown. I'm sitting here in a dressing gown because it's actually quite chilly and it's very, very blurry. But I'm going to quickly go fill this up because I'm almost at the end. And then we have a couple of final ones before we round out the video, guys. Relationship anxiety. Has he gone off me? Will he dump me? He spoke to me weird. Ah, that was ah with loads of exclamation marks. I'm with you there. I have been through that meal <laughs> over a decade. People think that if a woman says something right, that, oh, oh, she's moaning. In our heads, we have plucked up that courage to make whatever statement or ask something because our head is not shutting up it is the are they still attracted to me hold on a minute they didn't sound right when they said that or they text me different or it could be like they used a different emoji why are they calling me that they never call me that i've been there and i tell you what it drives you freaking balmy i have stayed up before I'm going to say like till 2, 3 a.m. in the morning when I had work the next day because I couldn't understand the way that I'd had a message sent to me because it was not like them at all. And I will be that person. Like, I don't speak to a lot of people, as we say, quite a loner. But I will know people's messaging types, let's say, to a T. And if there is something that I catch is a bit off, I'm sitting there thinking, what have I done? What have I done? Why, why are they saying that? Or well, they don't normally call me that. Well, why are they calling me that? Who are you, Who's calling my nickname? Who is... Like, what's going on? Why are they there? Who, who are they with? What are they talking about? It drives you freaking insane, let me tell you that. And it's not a nice feeling, and especially in a relationship, because I feel that your partner has to have a level of, like very good patience and understanding because to them they must just think sometimes oh my god but if they're not an overthinker they can't put themselves in that shoes if you get me and i do feel sorry for the partner on the other end because it's like they might sometimes be bombarded by all of this and they just think oh my god like stop but we actually can't we can't stop that's the thing once it's there and something niggles at us i'm just like <laughs> It's like a dog with a bone. I will not let that go. And it's not good. It's not good at all. But I just think... I don't know. It is, I think, the fear of being alone again. I think it's the fear of losing someone. But... Look, the way I look here, right? We come in this world on our own. So if we go out of this world on our own, it doesn't matter. I would rather be on my own than be in a room with someone and feel more alone than I did on my own. I'd rather have more fun on my own than be with someone and be miserable. And that's not because I know obviously being single and that, that's not a thing to go out and, I mean, you do you, but I, 
my single time, I was not interested in guys. Like, I focused myself into the gym. And I'm like, that's how like I took my self-love journey. But I just, it is horrible in a relationship. And as I say, there has to be that level of understanding and trust and patience. And if you find that, hold on to it. My goodness, hold on to it for dear life. But it's hard, ain't it? It is freaking hard. And then we've got a few more. As I say, these ones seem to be more relationship. I overthink things with my partner from his past of when we never even met. Guilty. Everyone has a past. If you find someone with no past, you're very blooming lucky. And I'd be like, where have you been living? Under a rock. Everyone has a past. Everyone along the line somewhere will have a form of attachment. It's about trying to make the best of the situation you're in. It's about trying to establish that line. As I say, you're with that person. Whatever is with that person, they come to. Whether that be children, family, ex-partner house money problems anything like that it comes with your partner and it can sometimes be very very hard because i've done it before you would go on facebook for example you would go on say a female profile of your said other halves and i have been that person many on a sleepover with the girls and we would scroll through to look for comments, to look for likes, and that's not healthy. And there could be something from before we even met, before we even knew each other. And in your head, you'd be like, well, why are they liking that? That's not what they should be liking. What, what What's that? Like, that? that's not what friends like. It drives you freaking insane, guys. It drives you. And I think sometimes, oh, my goodness, why do we need the stress? We do not need the stress in our life. And that, I think, refers back to, like, the social media being toxic. And why potentially like looking to maybe move away from it coming into like the new year. I say new year. It's going to be it before we know it, ain't it? It's actually going to be it before we know it. And yeah, it's not, it's not healthy at all. Not healthy at all. And the last one, love your channel. Thank you very much. What would you say is the main thing that you overthink? Where do I even begin? Oh my goodness, let me get comfy for this one. The main thing that I overthink. Oh. Life. We all know my death anxiety. I haven't been triggered by that much lately. I'm doing good. My death anxiety is kind of getting to grips on that. And what do I I overthink everything. I'm like one of you lovelies when you like you overthink if the sun's gonna rise. I literally will overthink anything. I overthink friendships. I overthink situations with family and friends. I will sit and get myself into a rut and overthink my body image. I will sit there and think about life, like where I should be at and where I'm at. I think about... My biggest thing is like I will sit there and I will overthink how my life could have been or should have been and I think sometimes you do wonder maybe if I'd have just shut up in a previous relationship and gone with the flow where would it be but then I think no because I think you wouldn't be happy and am I happy now I'm so happy okay I'm having a few wobbles at the minute I think that's to do with stress work the holiday autumn's coming up like I'm just feeling there's not enough time and as I say, there's a few things going on in my private life. It's all just coming to a head very, very soon. And I feel like I've had a few little wobbles, but I feel it's on the cards for an epic meltdown, let's just say. If you saw the uh, kind of like a pamper get ready with me for holiday last year where I had my full-blown meltdown, I feel one of them is coming on. And I don't know whether that is through stress, exhaustion. I think it's an accumulation of everything. But my overthinking is everything. I overthink money. Have I got enough for this? Can I spend that? Am I going to be alright if I do that? If I do this, can I take this away to a fool, for example? I overthink life. I overthink mum. I, I think a lot about mum's health lately. 
and her age and as I'm getting older that that's probably the only thing that would like kind of trigger my death anxiety at the moment we're not going to get into that I, I can't I can't cry not with these lashes on I overthink with mum I overthink my career and as I say my main thing is I overthink where could I have been or where should I be in life and then I look at where I am and I'm like <sighs> I am so far off. If you were to read what people say where you should be in life at 28, I'm probably so far off the rich scale. But I, I can't change it. It's stuff that's out of my control. I can't change that. So, uh, yes, to say I have a few overthinking issues myself, my lovely, I do. And on that note, Shall we round out, sit down with Shan? <laughs> so, my lovelies, thank you so, so much once again to all of you that sent in either via email or in Instagram. Keep an eye in the DMs, on the Instagram, on emails if you've got me. If you want to add me on any of them, they're always down in the description box below. And as I say, this will be where I put my sit down with Shan topics, scandals with Shan, um, Q&A McBangs with Mama G, confession videos when I'm on holiday. Like, I am so excited to actually sit down probably half drunk i'm not gonna lie like how we was last year and sit and read your naughtiest confessions i freaking love them videos i would love to travel once a month just to have them videos so yeah there's plenty of content coming there's plenty of interaction if you want to have it there guys but if you did enjoy the video you know what to do hit that thumbs up and subscribe down below and as i say please 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 in this comment box if you're going to leave a comment be nice, be kind, try if you know any tips or tricks guys because I want this video to be one where we can help each other out because it is a common problem it seems and we're not on our own and there's thousands of us out there, surely we've got a little bit of tips and tricks to help with each other okay but yes, take care, stay safe as always and I'll see you very soon for a brand new video, whatever that may be my lovelies, bye bye.